freaking night. There's so many trains. So what beliefs do you hold on to out of fear? Like there are some beliefs that we hold that are inconsequential, some thoughts. So for example, if I asked you how many brands of running shoes there are in the world, and you said something like 43, but the answer ended up being like something way higher, like 86 or something like that, would you be devastated knowing that you believe something that was wrong? I would imagine no. And so now think about something that would be devastating if you found out you were wrong about. And if you're struggling to think of something, think about concepts or topics that you hold or beliefs that you hold that are central to your identity. So think uh, the obvious would be political party, religion, but the other things like parenting styles or beliefs around free will and morality and good versus evil and even things like your astrological sign if that means something to you things that you hold as part of identity or something that you just adhere to religiously really trying to imagine that and if you have this feeling of like devastation then you can be pretty sure that you cannot confront that topic rationally meaning like no matter how hard you try you're not going to be able to see that topic without your emotions getting in the way of you understanding it because this is a form of confirmation bias and it's powerful because as a, as humans we are emotional beings before we are rational beings and so our emotional response to things like this keep us from seeing clearly because we're trying to protect ourselves from that negative energy, that negative reaction when we find out we're wrong. And we kind of have evolution to blame for that. So when I say that, you know, evolution is somewhat to blame for this, what I'm trying to say is we all have, as humans, these innate tendencies to do certain things. And around confirmation bias, there's four concepts that really keep us in the logical fallacy or this tendency that we have to fall prey to confirmation bias. And the first one is cognitive efficiency. Understanding that our cognitive efficiency matters, like our brain is pulling in literal energy to think and it doesn't want to expend too much energy. It doesn't want to spend a lot of its brain power on thinking critically about new topics or topics that conflict or contradict our current beliefs. I mean, understanding that and, and, and using that to know that your brain is kind of tricking you into believing what you already believe. I don't know, something to think about. So another thing to think about when we're talking about confirmation bias is humans, human, humanity's desire to have group cohesion. We want to be included, we want to belong, we want to be part of something. And so if challenging certain ideas and beliefs that you hold will take you away from that group cohesion, it could exclude you from a group that you hold close meaning just your community or your religious group or your political group or your friends that also believe in astrological signs. As soon as you feel that sense of exclusion, the possibility of that exclusion, your brain's gonna shut down a little bit. It does not want to be excluded because exclusion meant death. Inclusion meant survival. That's not necessarily the case anymore, but it's still deeply ingrained inside us. 
and I think we've all felt that. Along those same lines of feeling that discomfort about finding something that could kick you out of a group, there's also the discomfort that comes from finding out something that contradicts something that you currently believe, and that is called cognitive dissonance. And that discomfort alone, outside of the whole group cohesion thing, the cognitive dissonance could be enough that for you to avoid it anyways. So even if there isn't a group that adheres to a certain belief if, that you hold, your brain just doesn't want that discomfort. And maybe it's even a, a body feeling that you want to avoid. So that's number three. The last concept is adaptation from uncertainty, meaning that we have for pretty much all of human history avoided uncertainty because it has not served us well. As I mentioned in my uncertainty video, it's just not in our nature to seek out things that prove us to be wrong because uncertainty is uncomfortable and it didn't help us when we were hunting or gathering to have these existential doubts. So anyway, so, so with these four concepts, how do we then overcome the emotional trigger, all of these hurdles that we have in front of us, these emotional hurdles that block us from thinking rationally or logically? So I've studied, read a book, listened to probably dozens of podcasts at this point um, about internal family systems, IFS therapy. And in that therapy, there is the idea that inside of us, there are literal parts to us that hold certain trauma, that hold certain beliefs. And it is only by confronting those parts or the emotions that these parts hold that we're able to then move beyond that, that we're able to move past the emotional death grip that we have on these beliefs. So for example, if I had an emotional trigger to my political beliefs around immigration, if I were to look at that and understand where, what part of me is having an emotional reaction to that idea that I'm wrong about immigration, and then addressing that emotion to the point that you can calm that reaction, that you can calm the fear that you're having around being wrong on that topic. And it's much easier said than done and I'm not an expert in this and so I don't have like specific skills and strategies to do that, but based off of the books that I've read on internal family systems, that, that that's a huge it's a huge step talking to that part of you that is holding that emotion that's a big step in resolving this emotional hurdle that we have with confirmation bias to the things that we already believe so I'm sorry if you're coming to this channel for answers because I just don't I don't have them I'm not an expert but these are things that I think about a lot and things that have really challenged me to grow emotionally and mentally and spiritually in some ways. And so I just want to share these topics and questions. And so along that line, I would like to ask you a question. So like some of the things that I listed when I was listening out things that could potentially challenge your identity or beliefs that you hold closely, why don't you feel that feeling of devastation around the fear that Islam is true if you're not a Muslim? Why do you not fear, if you're not someone that believes in astrology, why do you not fear that that could be debunked? Why do you not fear the hell of Christianity if you're not Christian? Why do you not fear being reincarnated, reincarnated as a worm if you don't believe in, in Hindu or in Hinduism? What I'm trying to say is like, there are so many beliefs that people hold very closely to their identity that we do not fear. So why do we fear the exact same ones that someone else doesn't fear? Just remember that 
what we hold on to out of fear and out of convenience. That's not a healthy way to believe something. You can believe whatever you want, but, and you can have very strong beliefs, but hold on to them loosely. Otherwise, you're gonna end out with a death grip that's not rational. And I don't think that's healthy. To irrationally, emotionally grasp something that you're not willing to look at, critically. Anyways. Thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting or thought provoking. If it was, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, and ultimately share this with someone and talk about your emotionally held beliefs. Sometimes it's hard.